So in today's episode, we're going to look at Bande Dolio Chagi, reverse turning kick, one of the most exciting shots that you're going to see in ITF Taekwondo sparring. We want to look at how best to score it, when to choose the shot, and how to maximize the scoring efficiency when you're competing in ITF Taekwondo sparring. Welcome back to another episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. We are Adrian Byrne and Richie Ford, and every Friday we look to bring you a little bit of the very best of ITF Taekwondo sparring, competition, coaching, performance, uh, and some tips, training advice, and ways to make your game better. Uh, so this Friday, Richie, we're going to look at reverse turning kick. What's the what's the deal there? Yeah, so we actually did a video previously on some tips of how best to throw the shot. So um, maybe we link the card up there for people to have a look at that as well. But the plan was at the moment with lockdown, we're doing some live training sessions. So last week we covered sidekick the week before we covered the blitz. So we got some suggestions of maybe um, expanding more techniques. So we haven't done a video yet on Banda Dolly Chaggy mm -hmm. on Fight Chat Friday. So we said, yeah, maybe that would be a good one that we could look at different ways people throw the shot different setups, different body positioning and things like that. So just to give people different ways that they can use it for their own body types. And um, so we're going to see lots of different ways that people throw that shot today, yeah. all with the same effect of landing a nice devastating score and very visible, gets the crowd going. Get those and an three exciting points. one for everybody to see. Exactly. And um, so that's the plan for today. And then next Tuesday, um, we're going to do a live training session on YouTube Live. So if you haven't got involved in those yet, check them out. And we're going to cover banded Chaggy. So maybe some setups, maybe some exercises to get into some of the things that we'll cover today. Um, so yeah, it should be good. Yeah, and it really is, or strikes me anyway, as a shot that either when you're watching a competitor over time, it, they, it's in their repertoire and they use it. And because they're confident with it, it gets some return over time or they just don't use it. And it's like the shot doesn't mm. even exist. Uh, so even when the opportunity presents itself, no matter how quality the competitor is, it's just not a shot that they go to. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And it means that for us, when we went looking for videos, you almost go to your memory, you go, all right, who lands this shot? And, you know, when someone does land it, they land it every tournament. Like it's going to land mm. at some stage. So it, it, that, it's... That's it. When we, yeah, sorry, as you were saying, it was like the highlights from your memory as opposed to what can we find here because it's not really a very common shot no hence why it's like a big reward kind of a shot you know, and it gets people excited well then we threw it out on our instagram feed to on our story feature asking people to send in some of their own clips mm. so we got a couple of them as well today so we'll feature some of those and um, so thanks to everybody for sending those in and um, because as you said it's, it's not one that you can easily go find like we had last week's episode on sidekick You'll see yeah. that in every single contest that we see. So, yeah, it, as you said, it's one of those ones that the timing, the distance, the rhythm, all these things are so, so important to get it right. And um, so it really is one that you have to kind of almost specialize in to be able to land at well. So we'll jump to uh, one from, or a couple actually, from Katya, who is a great place to start. Katya Solovey uh, from Ukraine. Great place to start with this one as well. Um, and it, it, again, Within the female side of it, it's even less common than on the men's side of it. But again, for those who have it, they seem to land it even more often. So you, it begs the question, mm. well, why don't we see it more often? I think it's a big confidence shot. So we'll have a look at some confidently thrown reverse turning kicks here. Yeah, well, everything Katya does really is, is almost uh, confidently thrown, I guess. But <laughs> one of the things that we see here straight off the bat, like you mentioned, Adrian, is for me in the female side of the game, um, that 
flicky Yap Dolyachegi is more of an initiation shot off the front leg as opposed to a side kick. Yeah. So a lot of the females will lead with more of a turning kick type style that we see here from Anna. Um, and that that's actually sets people up really well to spin it in terms of a circular motion. Sure. And to just break the rhythm. So between the beats of the kick, um, because it's coming like at a, a turning kick motion, it's not really with the heel in front. It's much easier to spin around it. And you'll see all these shots here. Akacha is like spinning in a circular motion and just catching the, the more straight line shot with a direct counter. Yeah, and I think as you've highlighted there, it's uh, there's a difference in terms of how that front leg is carried, uh, not only between the male and the female game, but between uh, styles of, of opponent or styles of spar mm. and uh, almost the, the predominant style in the continent where you expect to see more of a direct sidekick from most of the Europeans uh, with the you know the foot in front, the heel in front. Um, but when you go to the Caribbean in particular, some of South America uh, uh, and certainly the likes of uh, Uzbekistan and you know the, the, the guys uh, there, some of the uh, some of the guys out that way, you, you find maybe because there's a little less exposure to the blending pot that is most of the, the you know the, the central north european countries um there's a little bit more freedom of expression there's a lot more uh, spinning shots mm. thrown there's a lot more kind of uh, angles and movement tried and then what that means is the stance changes and it's not as side facing and it tends to come up with a little bit more of an opening in there uh you know in terms of the shin showing rather than the, the sole of the foot showing as the, the front leg is brought forward and it affords that opportunity f uh, for that reverse turning kick. And, you know, we really do see that in um, Cacho's first one there against Anna, where, you know, it the, it's the shin is really what's coming forward at the time that that kick is thrown. There's no real threat that the side kick is going to come out there and land on the hip and, you know, and, and take catch off balance. So it's a really nice spot there. And I think that's something that people mm. can watch out for. Is what I'm seeing in front of me actually a sidekick, or is it not? Is it threatening? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, and, and go ahead. I was going to say if it's if the kick isn't going to take your hip, you know, if it's not going to take your balance as you begin your spin, well, there's a much less risk in throwing that spin. You're not going to concede mm. the warning necessarily, and you have a far greater chance of getting that score. Yeah, and we'll see this the whole way through the video, and um, yeah. so it'll be interesting for people watching to see how many of these examples actually have that flicky yap dolly cheggy motion and um, that almost sets up the band -aid. yeah so that'll be interesting to watch as we go through there's, i think there's plenty of examples in this one and then the second one from Katja then was a good example of where her opponent actually sets a rhythm and Katja breaks it but uh we we have again a lovely mm. lovely 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 shot using distance and more so yeah and we'll actually like that's one of the things that you have to vary this technique slightly based on the distance and um, so sometimes you can use full extension and it's lovely to see then when you when, when that lands like this one is very very obvious and clear yeah um, and we'll see later on in, in the video of some more closer range ones where you gotta almost get lower with that body mm -hmm. and arc and angle up the foot to get to the head and yeah. um, so we'll see some examples of that as well but that's a nice one there of using that full extension yeah so uh, and again it's the setup actually that matters to you know a huge degree in this one where uh, catches Hungarian opponent in that case has thrown the sidekick in the first uh, and, and being clashed and then mm. goes maybe a little deeper with the second one and Kachi just gives a little bit of ground the the distance is good and as the, the leg has reached its extension then the, the reverse turning kick comes in so it doesn't like she's not spinning into a chambered kick the kick is almost is yeah. fully extended and I think that's a huge point if you're trying it yourself because Oh, it, you know, it, when you're trying you to in the back all the time. Yeah, when when you try this and you get it wrong, it, it's it's a nasty one. So the distance that's involved to get this second shot is, uh, you know, it has to be bang on. Mm. Otherwise, as as you said, if she's a little too close when this starts, she just gets a kick in the kidney for her trouble, and it's not a great mm. place to be. Well, so, we can see, like, even on the end of that clip, yeah, you can see as well that like the her opponent's kick is kind of just coming off to the side of her body. Yes, so she's coming on the inside of it. So you just it gives you that angle of change that allows you to circle it a bit better. Um, so you don't want to come really direct with this where you're going direct straight line versus direct straight line. Sure. It's it's it, it's a circular shot. So you need to use that to its advantage and, and circle around with it. But you got to be very careful then as well and um, that you don't circle into it and you're landing too heavy. 
So that will make more sense if you if you're watching our video that we posted there in the card at the beginning. And um, one of the common mistakes is people throw that shot and land into it. If that makes sense, yeah, it will make sense if you if you check out that video. So you just got to be careful with that if you if you're circling in and coming on that that motion. So we're jumping on to another guy who's well known for landing uh, a few of these uh, banded audio taggies. So Julio Carlos from New York, USA. Um, and there's a similar setup on both of these examples that we've picked for him, uh, but we'll maybe just watch it first. So this is from 2015 in the World Championships. What I really like about this one is he, he um, switches the foot onto the right side. So we call this one picking the right side. So you'll see um, some people, obviously you, it's very difficult to throw this in the blind side. So Julio recognizes that that side is maybe open. So he puts his left foot to the back here, almost as if it's a footwork step that he's just changing rhythm. And that's something that he naturally does anyway. He just steps between the different stances to open and close range, go a bit lateral with the movement. Mm. Um, and it just looks it looks seamless really as if he's just part of his natural rhythm. He's just nice and chill and boom, great shot. And like just expanding on the exact same kind of thinking uh, here, final of the, or not final, oh, sorry, yeah, this is the final, I think, isn't yeah. it, from uh, last, shot of the last year, yeah, 2019, uh, and he's leading 4-0 at the time, so Belarus does have to chase him, um, but again, pulls that left leg behind uh, to throw the shot, and, uh, mm. you know, it's, there's such a lead up to it. And it's just, it looks like any of the other foot changes of direction that he's had up until that point. And that's that's the beauty yeah, of it. Exactly. Like, it looks very much like any of these change of direction. Uh, it's only, it, it's very slightly more pronounced maybe. And then the shot is thrown. But, you know, it's... It kind of uh, looks like he's taken it from almost square on. You see his foot is slightly behind here, obviously. Yeah. But like visually, if you're fighting him here on the other side, it's like, oh, he's square on here. There's an opportunity for me to go. Yeah. And then that's where you're, you're suckered in. And it's because his movement sets all this up. And I, I just, I, I find it very impressive there, the torque he gets in the hips. It's just a, it's a very explosive athlete, Julio is. Yeah. Um, and just the torque he gets in the hips there is just uh, very nice. And, and, and there's a lovely extension onto it. And all that happens is, you know, Belarus ends up basically static in his stance, uh, mm. you know, as Julio, you know, shimmies right, left. And and the opportunity is there to throw the shot. And I mean, one of the things that you often find when you're teaching this and correcting this in like more beginner students is, no, 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 I know we learned it and it's cool and it's new, but don't just throw it because, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not where you begin. And then we go and find them a whole load of clips where people just look like they've just gone to the first shot in the sequence is a reverse turning kick, but it, it's not. And, you know, there was such a lead in that that goes into a shot like that. But I, I think the key message in it is, you know, if you're going to throw that from any kind of, you know, range, you need to actually control your opponent's movement. And what Julio has done there is basically set the rhythm and chooses when to break it, break it much like Katja did with the uh, the psychic, where it was like uh, psychic clash, mm. psychic bandy. And, you know, they're almost a step ahead, really, aren't they? And they're thinking, well, you what you are doing is even though Julio is avoiding and he's he's effectively running away, we'll use the L uh, inverted commas there, but he's running away. Mm. He's dictating rhythm to his opponent. His opponent mm. has to try to, you know, ideally his opponent steals his space and dictates something back to Julio, but that hasn't happened there. Um, and as much as he's tried and he has kept his stance and he has like closed off the space, he's fallen into the rhythm. Uh, that Julio has set, and that allows Julio to break the rhythm to his advantage, and that's one of the things Julio does so so well. Um, yeah, once he gets that lead, but that's it. Like this, this guy from Belarus had nothing to lose here. He's four 0 down with correct. sixteen seconds left, I think. Yeah. So Julio is in the driving seat, and he he can set up these things, and and he's four 0 up. He can go for these nice fancy shots, and that's something that is actually evident in the clips that we took. That a lot of these um, bandedolios that land cleanly either happen very early or very late on. Yeah, it's very rare that you'll see one in the middle of a match, which is kind of interesting in itself to note. It, it is, and I mean, and, and it, that tends to happen more on the attacking side than like you know. It, it, it's also quite interesting as we look through it. There's very few of them that are the kind of um, you know classic defensive, just like retreating style. You know that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. as often at all. So. You know, the, the person has, you know, the, the attacker's position in space or the opponent's position in space kind of has to be predefined to get this shot to work. 
and and that's one of the the kind of th- key things you have to through distance through rhythm and um, through your own movement you have to you know set the pattern so that the person is going to be on the end of that shot um, if they're dictating it's really difficult so if they're setting the rhythm and they try to blitz you're probably yeah. only going to get your leg swapped before you get plowed through so it really is important if you're going to throw this shot that you're the one dictating the space and rhythm so that you're putting your opponent on the end of the shot and we have a, a hell of an example of that one coming up <laughs> You know, I think I know what's coming. You think you know what's coming, so uh, I might just uh, go to uh, to that one straight away. Then we'll we'll have a look. Yeah, I think like, and that's it. You can just see that being that step ahead. I think there's a lead up to the sequence as well, there where is. Uh, when your opponent is just like almost static. Yeah. Then that's the same concept of what we just talked about of when you're a step ahead of them and you're countering them, and um, it's just like who has that control really? And this is another example. Yeah. Um, stinger of a shot here from Carol Van Roon. Um, but you, you'll see the switch of stance that we talked about with Julio as well to get on the correct side. Yeah, but and Jonathan draws the Batista leg up. Here, he's, he's almost just kind of waiting for it, and it's like a cat and mouse game for a second. Yeah. But um, obviously, Carol has the advantage advantage of that moment. Wrong scene. Um, so that, yeah, so that that's important as well to, to be that step ahead um, and not be static and almost like waiting you got to be proactive really don't you yeah and i mean in both cases there's there's been a slightly different strategy used to put the person on the end of the foot and you know we look at it with max menko and what he's done is he's increased the pressure on felix in this one so this is a uh, igor max menko and felix kelly um uka championships i think um but the prior to this the build-up has been him increasingly adding pressure and Felix is kind of just looking to throw a counter dolio into, you know, whatever he sees coming. And it's just pinned him to the spot where here with Carl, the change of legs has caused, you know, Gabriel Batista to pick up his front leg. He's maybe looking to counter dolio or counter with a side kick against maybe a, a blitz or whatever he expects that's coming. But it gets a reaction for Carl, which lets him throw that big, big, big back leg shot. Mm. And it's like, it, that's very much like hitting a pad. You know, and yeah. that's you know th- that's dangerous place to be. You don't want to be there in in your sparring. You never want to be hit standing still like that. You know, it's it, it's kind of tough. Exactly, but that's the problem with just yeah. kind of waiting, isn't it? You, you kind of have to be proactive. You can't wait for the other person to make the move. A lot of time you'll see, all right, I want them to move so I can counter. Hmm. But you notice that even from these clips, the the true masters are counter attacking. They're proactive themselves, and they get you to make things happen. They're not yeah. waiting. But then they're that step behind. And we talked about already that the countering here and the band-aid, they're, anyone who lands it nice and clean, they're almost that step ahead. So I think that's a yeah. very important lesson in itself. Well, if we think of Carl's one there, like was he countering a front leg attack or was he attacking with a reverse turning kick? And, yeah, yeah. You know, really and truly, it's like, well, him swapping his legs drew a reaction so he could throw the shot. It doesn't matter how far along that uh, attack or that kick from Batista goes. Like if his foot flinches off the ground or if, if it stays flat in the ground, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as there's a lean onto the back leg and the weight comes up and he's he's pinned. It doesn't matter to Carl where, you know, if that ended up being a high dolio to the head, it would look nicer. It would look like it was, a, you know, much more like a counter attack from Carl. But mm. all he's done is he is a test step and an attack. And, you know, we just tend to think of reverse turning kick as a, a counter more often than yeah. not. Um, like he's made that happen like yeah 100 percent um they put the cards in his favor to set that up really yeah. but i think an interesting point that we talked about before recording as well is um jonathan batista actually carries his backhand quite well mm. and it's something that we would generally say like he's looking safe there um but it's just it shows that like being able to get that in as well Um unfortunately for batista a great great fighter um been in world finals numerous times really really high level but unfortunately he's in two of the clips here that we have today I know, but you'll yeah. see that his his back glove is actually in a very good position but because um it's, you're able to just get that angle correct as you attack with the psychic sometimes your backhand will naturally drop yeah and um, but we'll see in a later clip that sometimes having your backhand up there can is well obviously it's definitely good but um on once it makes contact and the foot bounces away from the face a little bit. Like here is an example. And um, you can see that your arm said, oh, did that land or did it not land? But you see in slow motion, it did. But then as the foot comes away from the face, it's like it can, you can 
be fooled into believe, oh, maybe that hit the glove. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting that the, the glove is kept high, but um, it doesn't stop the shot directly because as you lift the front leg, it'll naturally drop a little bit. But um, it's definitely useful there to have it then just in case you can fool the referees and say, yeah. ah, hit the glove. So, and I mean, uh, you can see that it just kind of bounces away from the head onto the glove. So it's just you're not really sure when it happens so quick. And I mean, it, it, yeah, as you said, it's unfortunate that, you know, uh, Batista comes forward twice in these clips, um, mm -hmm. you know, because what a superb fighter, uh, you know, but the, it only takes like there's, there's, there's a phrase and this one's Master Cooley's one, which is like if you, if you have a good bandit, Olio Chaggy, he, you know, or if your opponent does, he only has to be lucky once. So, mm. you know, and that was the, it's always a story in terms of where, where your backhand is. It's like, you can drop your hand lots of times, said, but he only has to be lucky once. And, yeah. and that's kind of the thing. It's, it's not luck per se. It's just, well, if you do have a little bit of a habit or a tendency that as you kick, the hand pulls away, as most of us do, it's, it's a natural thing to happen because your, your hands are counterbalancing your movement. So if your hand is going to stay high, well, then your posture has to be very high as well. And a lot sure. of other things have to change. Whereas for most people, you lean, and the second you lean, the hand drifts a little bit more than, than, than you'll be aware of. And for anyone who's ever done juche and you try to hold the hand position like that for the high side kick, as you, or for the side kick as you turn around to the high hook kick, um, you'll find out very quickly, all of a sudden your hands start doing things you don't want them to. As you lean into it, it's very hard to stay upright and hold parallel hands. And so when we're mm. sparring, any little bit of a lean probably has this that it goes with it so like that if you're going to look at a counter turning kick often the back hip is open and the back hip is open because the elbow falls away from the body as you lean back so we're looking at the same kind of things here so it's just an experienced competitor whether it's david kerr or carl van ruin going normally when the person picks up their front leg to kick that back hand's going to slip so the band is there and it's just knowing that and and making a mm. play yeah speaking of david kerr actually if anybody wants to check out his fight against Colin Adolphs from 2013 World Championships. There's some nice examples there of using Bande to come uh, to the body. Mm. Yeah, so they, to, obviously Colin has a massive reach on his leg, so there's some good examples in that. I think he throws it three or four times to the body, and um, so it's just a little bit of a change up there. So if anybody is interested in that, David Kerr, he's a he's a master on the Bande. Very good. We we'll look at that kind of shot. So looking at coming under the leg um, as a as a counter attack this time. Uh, and we have one from Jack Alderson from Norway. So mm. let's have a look here. I love this one. The fact that he gets so low just makes it such a clean shot. Yeah, for me, this is a textbook uh, execution yeah. of the shot. Like, mm. And we, we mentioned as well, like technically, according to the rule book, this shouldn't score because Jack isn't looking at the target. So maybe that rule in itself is something worth looking at because this is a beautiful shot. It's not it something is. that like you would say is not correct, correct technique or something that you want to and um, you know you want to you want to encourage these kind of shots obviously and like yeah. what a beautiful shot the fact that he gets so low as well and comes up underneath it's just perfect yeah Great it makes shot, it yeah. Ver it makes it very safe for him in relation to we we'll say keeping his head out of the danger zone but it also changes mm. the angle of the leg coming up so a it's harder to see it's harder to defend but it also means you can hit someone at a closer distance to you because you're changing the angle of the leg with the, by dropping yeah. the body away. Now, where this often goes wrong, that kind of shot is it's very hard to control the distance. You need to have your, you know, you need to be pretty much against that standing, you know, uh, excuse me, the, the, the flicking front leg for your opponent to be moving mm. slow enough forward to, to time it. Um, but it's uh, it's an absolute beautiful shot and the, the landing of it and the execution of it are, you know, very, very, very he just finds the gap i mean there's a very small gap there underneath the leg yeah and between um this guy's left hand and he just finds it so perfectly and uh, without even looking as well just makes it so much better i think <laughs> um great shot but i what, what's very nice here on that as well is the fact that we mentioned earlier that if you stay really tall and say and are in that straight line there's the opportunity of getting hit in the back and falling over mm. so that's one of the advantages of getting so low as well the fact that he gets low and circles yeah, it it, does, it takes away his opponent's opportunity to push him over with that with that side kick of his own, and you know, and again, when you drop the body like that, you're you'll tend to swing in the direction of the spin. So 
what it does do as well, if you're going back in a straight line compared to with say doing a switch leg dolio or, or, or bande. So if you're switching your legs, you'll tend to keep going backwards in the same line. Whereas taking this angle brings you off the line of the attack and into open space in the ring. So, you know, that's just another little add on that sometimes, you know, it, it can be exactly what you need at the time. Um, so we'll look at a couple that were traded. So this is going back to 2017 and the team sparring final in the World Championships. Uh, 15 Hong- actually. 15. Oh yeah, of course. Couldn't be 17. That was in Ireland. It seems so long ago, I know, huh? Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, so that was in uh, De Solo and uh, uh, Everyone was basically gone home at that stage almost. The, the way the, the men's final was so uh, so long we after everything else so finished. Long. Yeah. yeah, we were just hanging around in the warm-up area for a long time waiting to get on the ring. Um, but yeah, great shot here. Like Artem and Hong, two absolute warriors, two guys who are game and looking to get involved with the, with the hands. And, and that actually, I think, sets uh, this shot up nicely because they both don't know whether hands are coming or not. In the yeah. first clip, you see... Like here, um, Artem's trying to close the distance and Hong gives him one back after getting one taken before. But you can see Hong used a nice way here to set up his correct side. This one, Hong's trying to get the hands, I feel, and he's using that, again, not yeah. much of a tread on the front leg. Um, and then that just sets up the bande, the opportunity, again, getting low and circling it. But on this one, Hong just gives it back. But you see the way he switches his leg onto the correct side a bit differently. So we see him with Julio um, and Carl of direct step. But here, Hong comes as if he's kicking, and then that sets him up on the opposite side. So great shot by both lads here, by Artem and Hong. And we've always said it with Hong, like it's, uh, you know, if, if you watch him enough and you know him well enough, you kind of know what shot he throws off either side. But it doesn't help you in the amount of time that you've got to make decisions. And Hong is used to having, well, this leg goes in front, this is what comes next, that leg goes in front, that's what comes next. And he plays that so naturally. But, you know, we would always kind of say, well, OK, if the right leg's going in front, you got to be, you know, worried about those hands. If the left leg goes in front, he's probably going to kick. But so often he sets up. So, like, it's the left leg and then it comes to hands. And as you said, that was the beginning of it where Artem just, you you know, it, it kind of illustrates a principle where if you're going to counter, you want to counter at the earliest opportunity. You, you know, you don't want to um, let the shots develop because it, it, it increases yeah, the amount of variables. Be- yeah, you don't want to be countering this on the, like the third or fourth carry. Like, yeah. it's, it's either the first or the second, ideally bef- between the first and second, really. Yeah. And uh, it's just that natural timing that people can feel to get that in there. But like this match was an absolute barn burner, like, you know, going just hands and dollars to the body, uh, which which naturally kind of sets this up then, I think. Yeah. Because they're right, expecting the, the other guy to come and to be ready to, to trade off hands. And then just something like this just becomes available. And uh, it's it, ironic that in such a, a heavy contact match there and an entertaining one that they're able to fit in two bandes, one for each in uh, that sequence. Yeah, and I mean, the skill was there as well as the ability to trade. So um, mm. uh, we're going to have quite a contrast then as we come down the weight classes a bit and we have a look at uh, Eddie Dillon. Um, and this one we quite like because it's a, a continuation um, or an exit shot. And we were talking about uh, this quite a bit, as, you know, when we were talking about back kick and how yeah you know you can connect shots and use the uh the likes of a back kick uh, and in this case the band-aid to just let you out safely because it's mm. quite it's quite an intimidate or you know it, it's a dangerous thing to do for the for the person to step into the shot they have to uh you know they have you kind of have to respect the shot a little bit but you know the right thing is rather than the front leg dolio there is yeah can you step in at that stage but the um uh the setup with the the foot to foot recovery out of the dolio into the band aid is quite nice. Yeah, it's rare enough yeah. that we see it on the attacking side like this, but uh, it, it is a shot that's there, um, and great great shot to be able to push somebody on the back foot and get that off is nice. And the important kind of aspect about it is setting the feet. Yeah. So getting your feet right there is what allows that to happen, and just being able to be on the correct side. Um, so we see like naturally the way that some people punch like that of almost charging forward your feet will set this up actually nicely but it's, it's putting your feet in the correct order to get mm-hmm. it on the correct side is the skill that's in this and i i feel as well that you know to make that kind of thing work you have to split the rhythm so you know as you're coming forward and you have the hands as one two three whatever the rhythm is you almost need like one two three gap four you know to mm. uh to to kind of let the person move beyond hands range onto the band-aid 
So it's it's almost like they're continuing as if they're expecting the third punch or the fourth punch, whatever it happens to be. And that moment that you've taken to set your feet lets the band-aid develop. And that's one that, uh, whether it's with the back kick or the band-aid, that I think the likes of Jenny Lahan does very, very well. Um, where they create so much momentum going forwards. Timmy Boss is another example of that, where they create so much momentum yeah. going forward, they then just stop for a fraction of a beat to let the space develop, and then that lets the legs into the action. And I think, that, mm. you know, that rhythmic skill is very important to get that, you know, the person on the range that you need. It's quite It's useful. kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like the whole idea that the matador of you just, you let them go past you kind of a little bit. Yeah. And then that, like you said, that space opens up. Um, so as they're, as they're drifting back with you, you just stop for a second, let them pass you out. And yeah, yeah. great one. Actually, I didn't think of that now as a nice setup for the attack. Yeah, and I think it just lets the space develop between the heads so that the shot can get there. And, mm. you know, it, it, it works much better on the, you know, on the attacking side, of course. So, you know, because when you're when you have taken the initiative, you are setting the rhythm. It's much easier to put a little pause in there and go again. And you often you see this out of, um, we'll say, a blitz stop go, where rather than, um, you know, continuing to punch until you, you travel, where you potentially you don't get you know, much more reward other than the first score. If you, mm. if you can actually hit break and hit again, you, you'll often, you'll get your, your, your double score and it, it catches the person even more because you're messing with momentum as well. So I think it's a, it's a very nice one when that works out. Yeah. So usually you see that on the other side, really, that when somebody goes forward and stops, the opponent comes back at them. Yeah. And so it's that push pull action that we talk about a lot. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's nice to actually, flip that on its head and go push stop push yeah it's a nice way to change the rhythm yeah, it's a very very brief pause so we're going to jump over and look at uh, some close distance ones and uh you know and, and this is where you get to take your your moment in the spotlight as well so let's have a look <laughs> yeah so this is one of the closer ones that we talk about um so this is when i was sporting a, a big hefty beard and <laughs> heavier in the weights as well probably so uh beard man yeah, tkd but, yeah the glove here is one of the things that we mentioned earlier as well. You see, as I land this, Mog's able to almost use his glove to push it away from his face. Yeah. And in real time, you're like, oh, did that land? Did it not? And yeah, But then when you've seen the slow motion. So that is that one of the best parts about having your hand there. And uh, Mog did a great job of actually closing the distance and getting in on top of me again. So I was just taking a warning there, count my losses. Hopefully that three points are registered. Yeah, um, as long as you get your foot down. Yeah, because that close distance can can be a trouble. But that's what we talk about of getting your body so low on on that one. And again, that, that actually that shot actually came off me leading with my left, and I clashed legs, and then I dropped, dropped down back. and put it to the back. Mm. So similar to what we have seen with Carl, similar to what we seen with Julio a while ago. And um, so it, it it is one of those ones that pops up a lot, isn't it? When there's a bit of a, a step change to get to the open side, it just when you put your foot back to the back, it almost invites the opponent to close into the distance. Yeah. And, and usually that would be done with their own front leg. So that is one of the, the, the benefits of that type. Yeah. And, and exactly that. And, and this one uh, from Marcus uh, from Denmark, but the, uh, you know, as, as we look into it, you have that change of leg once again. And I, I think sometimes it just takes a second for the person to realize that their leg has changed and the, mm. you know, that the guard needs to be a bit different and, and complicated because his opponent and this one had changed legs as well. And, and that's one of the reasons as well why I suppose from a coaching point of view, we, you know, we'd say to people like, we'd often find that people just naturally, whatever way they've, they've developed, they arrive at national team for the first time and they have these change the legs whenever it's, it's like a nervous twitch when they feel like they've bounced for too long and they haven't done anything, they change their legs. You know, it will stop. Why did you do that? What was what was coming next? And they're looking at you blank. He's like, what do you mean? What's coming next? And it's like, well, if you don't have a reason to change your legs, don't change your, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's just that it needs kind to of be thing. Purposeful. If your, your movements need to be purposeful. And I think that's what can happen there is, you know, when a person just changes legs, your the, the natural instinct is to maybe you change your legs to follow them, you know, and, and in particular, if you've been coached to do drills like that, like footwork exercises where you mirror your opponent mm. and things like that. But, you know, we, we tend to follow. We follow better than we lead, um, you know, and and because of that, it can be a lovely little setup, that change of leg, that drift that brings you to the other side. The person wants to fill the space. We, we bore that vacuum. We try to fill that space. 
and you walk yourself onto the band aid on the open side. So, you know, we haven't got an example of that one where it's the person changing leg and they bring it blindside, but it could happen that side as well. So, yeah, I think, yeah, that's actually you know. one of like, it's very rare to actually see that chat. I think we actually covered um, in Katie Laffin and Sylvia. I think yeah. that actually featured in that video. So go and check that out if you want to see a blindside version, I think. Um, but yeah, that one there that you've seen from Marcus was really nice to be able to see that um, set up. It could be band or back kick. Yeah. So once you get that, that change of body position correct, it can be either or really, you know. So that's one of the, the beauties of that. Like that could easily be a back kick as to the head as yeah. it could be a band -aid. If that comes so to the just, body, we're going to call that a back kick. Yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, it's the same setup, same change of rhythm, same distance management and all that sets that up yeah and we do see that so often where and the the type of person who tends to have one also often has the other and what that means is you know it, it, i mean i take the we, we go back to example number one and you take uh catch us but equally you could have taken igor maximenko you know uh, as an example and they're both coming out of the same stable as it were from uh oleg Solovey. but uh when the body starts to turn you have no way as an opponent of knowing is that a back kick, a band aid, or a 360 because all three shots there from Ireland mm. to Luke Woods, very much the same kind of thing. It's just like yeah. this little whirling dervish that appears in front of you. That if you don't interrupt on the first start of the turn, or if you don't change your angular distance right at the beginning of it, you can kind of get locked into your spot and it. Just then, you're in no man's land. You're in no man's land. What's going to come out of it? Mm. And so the same setups and the same principles, because they apply for all three kicks. Well, that that's something for us. Like you know, if we're going to have to learn the principle once anyway for one of the kicks, we might as well learn it and apply it for all three, because then Definitely. it makes the answer harder to find for your opponent. So I think yeah. You know, fantastic shots, very indicative, very signature ITF stuff. And, you know, it's you, you need at least one of, I think, for me anyway, a back kick or a band aid in your wheelhouse. Um, in particular, to deal with an, a, like a taller, more flexible opponent. I mean, that's just one of those things where, you know, for me, if you don't have one of those shots, it makes dealing with that taller, more flexible opponent way more challenging. So, mm, sure. you know. And, and be able to have it on both sides as well because you don't know what side they're leading off. Um, yeah. like, but just as well, you can do that switch, of course, to get it on your correct side that we see very often. But what about then on the other side when you need to be able to throw it off there and you can't step and spin all the time? So yeah. having that on both sides is very important. Very useful. Um, and even if it's a case of having you know one on one side, one on the other. But a, yeah, a very... that, like I would have the band on the left, but I would favor the back kick on the right side. Yeah. So like either or, at least you have an option, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's interesting because I'd say almost the same thing uh, as you, but we spar with the opposite legs in front. So there you yeah. go. Um, that's it's just the way that it works. Uh, mm. But again, you most people will find this at some stage they'll have a preference and it'll often be that they want to do the same leg for everything. So they want their front, their right leg in front to side kick and they want their right leg behind to band or back kick. And that's just not how it emerges in sparring. So it is one of those things that these are a great shot to work both sides simply because you'll probably throw it more often on your non-dominant leg. So just something to bear in mind as well. Yeah. So I think that kind of covers uh, what we wanted to explore this morning and hopefully provoke some questions from people of things they might like us to look at, cover or introduce in uh, on Tuesday session. So next Tuesday, quarter past seven, we will go live on YouTube and uh, we will be looking at Band-Aid. We'll look at, I suppose, if you follow the format of the last two sessions that we did over the previous two weeks, we'll look at having some general warm up, a specific warm up or a couple of specific exercises that build capacity to throw the technique. Uh, and then we'll have a look at some exercises that we can take to really um, build up, uh, you know, the kind of training that you can do on your own at the moment and hopefully put out some ideas for what you can do when you get uh, an opponent or a partner back again. And so yeah, definitely. We're, we're looking forward to being able to expand these sessions as well yeah. onto more um, live work with a partner and things like that. So that will be something for after lockdown. For now, we're just exploring some ideas that you can do on your own. Um, and set that foundation that we can then further build above and um, so yeah that's the plan also we will probably some stage get to our q a and um, from instagram for sure in the next week or so and um, so we just to mark the thirty thousand followers on instagram we just do a q a every little milestone so uh we have a couple of questions there lined up 
So we'll do that Q&A here some stage in a bit of long form. Uh, and we hope to be looking at a little bit of footwork as well next week. So if that's something that's interested in you, some nice examples of footwork. We've seen some bits from Julio there mm. um, to avoid and evade and some other little bits as well to set up attacks. So that, that'll be the plan for next week. So if that's interested, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Hit this video a like. And hopefully we'll see you on Tuesday. Very good. See everybody.